New Catechism of the Roman Catholic Church states, the Eucharist is the heart and summit of the Church's life, and refers to it as the sacrament of sacraments. It is at once the sacrifice of Calvary and a living memorial. The Eucharist can also simply refer to the consecrated host, also known as the Blessed Sacrament or Holy Communion. The presence of Christ continues as long as the Eucharistic species of consecrated bread and wine subsist. Thus, the faithful are called to adoration before both the exposed Blessed Sacrament and the tabernacle. The word Eucharist comes from two Greek words which when translated means good gift. But as this century draws to a close, it appears this sacramental gift has been widely rejected by many Catholics. That Christ is truly and actually present in the consecrated host by the power of his word and spirit is a mystery of faith which has long been greeted with doubt and unbelief. When Jesus first announced that he would become our food, many of his followers left him saying, this saying is hard, who can accept it? A 1992 Gallup survey found that almost 70% of American Catholics do not believe Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. In response to these doubts, a growing number of unexplained miraculous phenomena involving the Eucharist have been occurring, imploring all people to believe in the truth of this great mystery of faith. In the 1990s alone, close to a dozen reports of Eucharistic miracles have surfaced from across the United States. This documentary will explore four of these occurrences from Massachusetts, New Jersey, Texas, and Hawaii. These occurrences appear clearly prophetic, especially in light of church-approved apparitions, like those which took place in Fatima, Portugal in 1917. According to one of the Fatima visionaries, Lucia dos Santos, during one of the apparitions with the Blessed Sacrament suspended in the air, a beautiful angel prostrated himself in front of the host and chalice, then instructed the children to recite the following prayer three times. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore thee profoundly. I offer thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrageous, sacrilegious, and indifference with which he himself is offended, by the infinite merits of the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. Besides accurately predicting World War I and II, the apparitions at Fatima foretold a time of great apostasy or loss of faith within the church. One example of this apostasy is the widespread abuse of the Blessed Sacrament in Satanic rituals or Black Masses, which use consecrated hosts stolen from Catholic churches. As this priest has learned, Hosts are obtained through bribery from children. Money is offered to them if they will bring the host from Holy Communion and hand it over so that it can be vilified in satanic or black masses. The vulnerability of our Lord Jesus is exploited, but this could be prevented in great measure by the priests. Catholic priests who counsel victims of satanic abuse say that the Eucharist is an essential part of the black mass. It's odd that people who oppose Jesus and his church believe in the real presence. Black masses desecrate the Eucharist by spitting on it, stabbing it, urinating, and defecating on it. Those individuals involved know they're not lashing out at a symbol, but are actually lashing out at the real thing. They're lashing out at Jesus. Besides these satanic desecrations, Indifference toward the Blessed Sacrament on the parish level is also a serious concern. Whereas uh, being associated in the parish, hosts, consecrated hosts were found under the pews in the ladies' room. 
There's a tremendous amount of desecration, uh, and it continues. For whatever reason, one of them is that it's more accessible when they receive Jesus in the hand. It is undeniably clear today's sacrilegious indifference toward the Blessed Sacrament fulfills the prophecy of which the angel had spoken at Fatima. Just outside this eastern port city, known for its rich historical significance, there has occurred perhaps one of the most graphic and convincing Eucharistic phenomena to take place in this country. During Lent 1995, a Eucharistic minister near the town of Methuen was preparing to give Holy Communion to a sick child. Upon opening the tabernacle, the Eucharistic minister discovered a consecrated host oozing blood. Father John Mead, a Marist father from Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish in Methuen, was contacted immediately after the initial occurrence. As I say, I grew from a tremendous skepticism, which is, I think, the, the, the growing steps you need, any priest would need. I, I'd worry to death about people who, very often they're fanatic, that go in and they, 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 they want to believe, therefore. Father Mead spoke to the witnesses, looking for any natural explanation but he soon realized something very peculiar was happening with this host. I don't think I've ever seen it when it looked the same as the time before. It always looked a, a little different to me, either smaller or bigger or more spread out. It looks like a, uh, a host that has, somebody has dropped some tea on it and, and, and blotched it. The only difference is it changes. It's, it's, it's not always the same shape not necessarily the same shape. It's not always the same size. So there's something happening there. Because the host appeared to constantly alter itself, Father René Laurentin, the world's foremost Mariologist and expert in mysticism, suggested the host be properly preserved. It was immediately placed in a small glass receptacle for holy objects called a reliquary. When this bled, and it was already in a reliquary. It just, it bled. It was as if um, there was some way to injure that host, and if you, if you took a pin or something and scratched it, it bled. It's just a normal size host, and it's pretty, uh, you know, I, my words would be bloody. You know, it's pretty bloody. Because usually, you know, uh, as a nurse, you can never say it's blood. How do you know, you know, that's almost diagnosing something, but by looking at it from my, you know, with my human eyes, it, it's, it has quite a bit of blood on there and how it got there, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty profound. I saw three thick veins. They looked dark blue, almost black. I saw some smaller, tiny veins going in a vertical direction, very fine, almost thread-like. Inga McNeil. Now what I saw then when the host uh, that had the uh, the blood on it, uh, the, um, the blood didn't cover the entire host. It looked as if it appeared or came or exuded from uh, the host itself at one particular point, and then it began to drip down. Father Mead followed the guidelines established by the church in dealing with such phenomena. First of all, they would have to know the subjective evidence. You could not simply take the word of a priest. You'd have to have the subjective evidence. And that subjective evidence, of course, is revealed not simply by what you see, but also ought to be subjected to scientific investigation. After witness testimonies were collected, Dr. Bogoslaw Lipinski, a biochemist and blood specialist from Boston, was asked to do a non-invasive test with the host to determine the origin and nature of the oozing substance. And when she, she opened this and showed it to me, I said, wow, this, you know, I work with blood for all my life. I know how the blood looks like. <laughs> I can immediately distinguish between anything else. And this was uh, like a partly fresh, partly already clotted blood on the surface of the host touching the glass. And on the glass, you could see that almost still fresh blood. 
So I said, well, that certainly looks for me as blood. But again, as a scientist, I have to prove it. Dr. Lipinski conducted preliminary tests which indicated the presence of blood. But still more conclusive tests were needed to prove if it was human blood. On August 30th, 1995, crust samples from the host were examined at the California Lab of Forensic Science in Yorba Linda, California. Forensic specialist Dean Gialamas conducted visual, chemical, and microscopic tests. The initial tests for blood using the OTOL and LMG method were both positive. The lab then used the most conclusive test available to forensic science in distinguishing the presence of human blood called crossover electrophoresis. This test confirmed the substance coming from the consecrated host was human blood. After confirming it was human blood, the focus shifted more toward the witnesses. Oh yes, what's called a popular cult always has some uh, objective of value as far as the church is concerned. But of course we have to distinguish there between people too. We're, we're talking now about normal type of people, psychological as well as in their understanding of the church. We're assuming that what you mean by people, you're talking about people who have uh, an ordinary good perception of what the church is teaching and who are also not uh, unduly imaginative. That is, it's psychologically their sound. The church follows the gospel's admonition to judge a tree by its fruits. The priests and laity involved say they have indeed received substantial spiritual graces. I no, I no longer offer our Lord in the Mass in faith. I, he has said, look at here's the proof of it. So, I mean, I feel called upon to spend much more and more time uh, with him and it's, uh, his, his love is just incomprehensible so and frustrating at times because you're so weak and sinful and, but it's just it's just God speaking saying I am in the host Father Mead says there are indeed great spiritual fruits but he believes the more important reaction is that Catholics are awakening from their spiritual sleep regarding the Eucharist. He's try, trying to call our attention. The main thing is that God so loves us, he gave us his only begotten son. That's got to get to us. That's got to reach us some, so, somehow, some way. That's got to come into our life. And we've got to make a decision about it. We've got to do something about it. I give you my only begotten son, the most precious thing I've got. And, uh, the, uh, and, and God is what God gave us. And that's the Eucharist. God is with us. God is with us. Ultimately, it is the church's task to judge the authenticity of these events. The local bishop is investigating this report. The Eucharist is a miracle, a mystery of faith, beyond reason. The Eucharistic doctrine must be accepted on faith, and faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit. 76-year-old Father Robert Rooney had always believed this, but on April 10, 1994, witnesses say the Eucharist came to life before his very eyes. What began as a typical Sunday Mass at St. Vincent de Paul Church in Yardville, New Jersey, ended quite differently. It was on Mercy Sunday, and in other words, when I look back, it was also the Gospel of the Doubting Thomas. So I was saying 10.30 Mass. It was going along regular. The sermon was over, and the offertory, and then came the consecration. And during the, at the consecration over the bread, I held up the host, and there was blood on the host. It bled immediately at the consecration. And as time elapsed, it continued to bleed, oozed blood from the inside, and penetrated even through the entire host. Father Stephen Valenta, a Franciscan priest, was Father Rooney's spiritual advisor and confessor. He was startled by what was happening to the host. 
that there was blood, or what seemed to be like blood, oozing right out of the hose and spreading itself into the various portions of the host. And he still elevated it, and when he was elevating it, of course, he was very nervous, and he dropped the hose very quickly into the paten, or onto the paten. And I left it there, and I didn't touch it again. I was afraid of it. I had consumed a small host to confect the mass. After distributing communion, Father Rooney gave the final blessing to the more than 100 parishioners who had gathered for Holy Mass. He then went immediately to the sacristy to see if the blood was somehow his own. I'm sure it's not my blood because I was not bleeding. There was no blood on the linens or on the vestments, and I'm always touching myself saying Mass, and if there were blood on my hands, it would have come off on the vestments or on the linens. And for that much blood on the host, what it looks like, well, you'd have to be bleeding quite a bit. They can test my blood at any time. It's not mine. According to Father Rooney, the host initially bled only on the side facing him and the others on the altar, the two altar boys, the reader, and the priest who assisted him with communion. As soon as we got into the sacristy, the two altar boys said to me, Hey, Father, what are you doing? Getting fancy? Using designs on the hosts? I said, no, I'm not. And then the reader said to me, yeah, you are getting fancy, using colored designs on the hosts. And so they said, what about that? I said, you ask your pastor. I don't know. And I let it go with that.